Hello everyone, please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for latest update. Friends, today I am going to explain CGI Java intro questions and answers. So recently one of my subscribers attending the CGI. So at that time they are asking almost 16 intro questions. So he got selected. That's why I collected all the intro questions and I prepared the answer for all the questions. Now I am going to explain each and every question with answer. So first what they are asking is what is garbage collector? Java garbage collector is the process by which Java program perform automatic memory management. So this means so the garbage collector also it is one of the system Java program. It is always run our regular Java program to collect unused memory spaces. So Java program compiled to byte code that can be run on a Java virtual machine. So this means so when we are compiling the Java program it, the compiler convert the Java program into byte code. The byte code will be run on a JVM. That means Java virtual machine. So when Java program runs on JVM, objects are created on the heap memory. So whenever the program is running on JVM, the objects will be created and it will be stored in a heap memory. So if you see the JVM architecture, so there are multiple memory locations are there. So objects will be stored in a heap memory. So next point is some of the objects will be no longer required. Sometimes the objects are not required for throughout the program. So what we can do? The garbage collector find those unused objects and delete them to free up memory. So the garbage collector find those unused memory objects and delete to free up a memory. If you are not deleting the unused object after some times we are getting the out of memory exception. So that's why the garbage collector plays an important role in the JVM. Next question what they are asking what are the whoops concept available in Java. So this whoops concept is very very important question because if you go any interview so they are asking the whoops concepts. So there are four major whoops concept available in Java. One is the inheritance, another one is the polymorphism, third one is the encapsulation and fourth one is the abstraction. Coming to the inheritance. Inheritance is a mechanism of acquiring the properties and method from parent class to child class is nothing but a inheritance. In Java we have a five types of inheritance are there. So one is the single level inheritance, second one is the multi level inheritance, third one is the multiple inheritance, fourth one is the hierarchical inheritance and fifth one is the hybrid inheritance. So but Java does not support multiple inheritance through classes but we can achieve the same functionality through interfaces. So now coming to the polymorphism. Polymorphism means one name many forms. That means many functions with, exist with the same name but their implementation is different from one class to another class. So there are two types of polymorphisms are there in Java. One is the compile time polymorphism, another one is the runtime polymorphism. Compile time polymorphism means the methods are binding with an object at compile time is nothing but a compile time polymorphism. Runtime polymorphism means methods are binding with an object at runtime is nothing but a runtime polymorphism. Compile time polymorphism best example is method overloading. Runtime polymorphism best example is method overriding. So coming to the encapsulation, encapsulation means it is a mechanism of wrapping the variables and methods into a single unit is nothing but a encapsulation. So the best example is Java bean class. So in the Java bean we have a uh, private properties and public setters and getters method. So that is the example of encapsulation. Now coming to the abstraction. Abstraction is the process of hiding the internal implementation details from the user and provide only necessary functional to the user is nothing but a abstraction. In Java we can achieve the abstraction in two different ways. One is the abstract class and the one is the interfaces. Next question is write a interface example program in Java. So they are asking the example program of interface. So here we are creating the interface drawable. So here we have a one method is here. So this is the abstract method. Abstract method means it does not have any implementation in interface. So if you want to implement this method, we have to create a issue derived class. So here we are creating two classes. One is the rectangle and the one is the circle. So here rectangle implement the drawable interface. So now the rectangle class is eligible to implement a draw method. So here we are writing the 
implementation of draw method here draw rectangle so this is the only just we are printing the message now we are creating the circle class and implement a raw bool interface so here also we are implementing the draw method so draw circle is the implementation now i am creating the one test class here uh, through interface we are creating the object of derived class r the draw means so it will call the rectangle draw method and if you call the draw draw bool c equal to new circle so here through interface we are creating the child class object c dot draw means so it will create the circle class uh, uh, draw method uh, implementation so it will execute the this method so that is the about interface example now coming to the types of exceptions in java so there are two types of exceptions are there in java one is the checked exception another one is the unchecked exception checked exception means the uh, the exception the uh, Checked exceptions are also known as a compiled time exception. These exceptions are checked by the compiler during the compilation process to confirm whether the exception is handled by the programmer or not. If not, then system display the compiled time error. So, compiled time exception means the exception which are checked by the compiler at compiled time. Then it is known as a compiled time exception or checked exception. So, if you see the example, SQL exception. IO exception and class not found exceptions are coming at the time of compilation page. So that's why we are uh, uh, telling like it, they are the checked exception. Next one is the unchecked exception. Unchecked exceptions are like uh, a runtime exception. The unchecked exceptions are those exceptions that occur during the execution of the program. Execution of the program is runtime, it will come. And they are also referred as a runtime exception. These exceptions are generally ignored during the compilation page. So whenever we are compiling, so these exceptions are ignored that time. That means it's not rising any exception. They are not checked by the compiler at the compi compilation page. So these exceptions are runtime exception, which are occurred at a runtime. So the examples are arithmetic exception, null point exception, and number point exception. So next question is, can we write a try with a multiple catch block? That means, yes, we can write the try with a multiple catch, catch block. So in the single try block, we can write it, any number of catch blocks. So sixth question is, what is user defined as custom defined exception? and write the example program. The exception which are created by the programmer is nothing but a user defined exception or custom defined exception. That means, so the programmer is uh, writing the code to implement the exception is nothing but a custom exception. So here I'm writing the one instruction amount exception and extend the super class to exception. So here I'm writing one con constructor, public constructor, and here pass the string as argument. So in this, uh, we are passing the super of string. So this will be executing the exception super class, and it will print the some string message to the user. So here I'm writing the one uh, test class. So here I'm writing one validate method, and pass the amount as an argument, and throws instruction to amount exception. So here I'm checking, if amount less than 20,000, that time it throws new insufficient amount exception. Amount is insufficient. So I pass the string as argument. So in the main method, I am writing the one validate method. I am passing that 20,000. So it will come to here. So here it, this 20,000 assigned to amount and amount less than 20,000. So that time it will coming the uh, insufficient amount exception. So suppose if I am passing the 10,000, so 10,000 is uh, uh, less than 20,000. So 20,000 is the bigger than uh, 10,000. That's why it's coming the insufficient amount exception and it will be executed the catch block and it will execute. So here it will throw the exception and it will go to here and it will take the this string argument as a, this string argument is assigned to here. This will come to here. So this super class, um, it will call the exception super class, super method, and it will execute all the each related uh, predefined code. So next question is, what are the implicit objects available in JSP? So in JSP, there are nine mainly implicit objects are available. One is the out, second one is the request, and third one is the response, fourth one is the config, and fifth one is the application, sixth one is the session, and seventh one is the page context, eighth one is the page, and ninth one is the exception. So these are the nine implicit subjects available in JSP. So next question is, what are the bean scopes in Spring? So in Spring, there are 
five bean scopes are available. One is the single turn, second one is the prototype, third one is the request, fourth one is the session, and fifth one is the global session. So ninth question is what is default scope? So single turn is the default scope. Tenth question, if declare bean A is a single term, for five bean, how many objects will be created? So only one object will be created for each and every request if you declare the scope as a single turn. So next question is oh, write a query for left outer join. So left outer join, uh, left, uh, left join keyword returns all the record from the left side table and the matching record from the right side table. So if you see the query, select customers dot customer name orders dot order ID. So here we are fetching the customer name and order ID from where? from customers left join orders so here it is left join joins the both the tables and it will get all the left side record from the left side table only matching record from the right side table so that's why on customers dot customer id equal to orders dot customer id so here is the customer id the common column for both the tables. that's why it will get all the record from left side table and only matching records so so based on this customer ID, the matching records from the orders table will be fetching. So order by customers dot customer name. So based on the order name, it will fetch all the customer names and order IDs from the left side table, only matching record from the right side table. That means order table. So next question, what they're asking is the Java functional interfaces. So an interface that contain exactly one abstract mother is nothing but a functional interface. So in functional interface only you have a one abstract method and it can have any number of default and static methods. So why functional interface? One of the major benefit of the functional interface, we can use the lambda expression to instantiate them. So main purpose is in the lambda expression to instant the functional interface, we can use the lambda expression. Functional interface are mainly used in a lambda expression, method reference and constructor references. So third, 13 question is how to remove the duplicate from the list. We can pass the list object to the set, then it will remove the duplicate values. So this means, so generally the list allows the duplicate, but set does not allow duplicate. So once we are inserting all the element into the list object, so if you, uh, list object is having the duplicate, so we can pass this list object as a parameter to the set. So when we pass the list into the set as argument, so set finally return the only unique records because set does not allow duplicate records. So what is the, how to create immutable class in Java? So this is the 14th question, the instance variables of the class final. So if you want to create immutable class, we can declare the instance variable as a final. That means we cannot change the value of the final variable after creating objects. So if you declare any variable as a final, so that variable we cannot change after declaring. So the class is final, so we cannot create the subclass. So the class should be final. So when we create immutable class, so that class should be final. So if you make a final, we cannot create the subclass of the final class. So third point is there is no setter method. We have no option to change the value of the instance variable. So if you don't create the setter method for this uh, uh, final class, so we cannot change the values. Generally, we cannot, we can change the values using a setter method. Uh, using setters and getters, we can change the values and we can set and get the values. But in final class, we cannot create the setter method for the this instance variables. So this is the example. Here I'm creating the employee class and the final class. And the pawn card is the instance variable and declaring the final. So this in the constructor only we can initialize the final variables. So here only we have getter method, we don't have setter method. So this is the test class, here this is the main method. So here I'm creating the employee object and here the through constructor I'm assigning the pawn card number. And here string that get pawn card number means, so here the only getter, we can get it, we cannot set. If you set the values, that means it is updating the values, but final class, we cannot update the values. That's why here we are using the getter method to get the pawn card. Here we are printing the pawn card number. So 15th question is Spring Boot advantage compared to Spring. So when we compare the Spring with the Spring Boot, the Spring Boot have many advantages compared to Spring. So what are the advantages of Spring Boot now? Easy to understand and develop the Spring application. So Spring Boot is the 
compared to spring spring boot is the we can easily understand the spring boot so spring boot is nothing but a, a existing framework with additional of uh, uh, embedded uh, http server and the annotation configuration which make it easier to understand and fast process of development so in the spring boot we can each and everything we can make it a annotation based configuration but in case of spring spring only some of the annotation we are able to use but uh, it's a partially we are using the annotation in spring but in case of spring boot we can each and everything we can make it a using uh, annotation based configuration so we no need to write any configuration file in spring boot so in Spring Boot, one additional feature is we have a embedded Tomcat server. Because of this, we no need to externally add the server into the Spring Boot application. By, by inbuilt Spring Boot having the Tomcat server, we can deploy the application in the Tomcat server. When we run the Spring Boot application, it will automatically deploy into the Tomcat server. So third point is increase the productivity and reduce the development time. Because of the Spring Boot, it will increase the productivity and also uh, development time also it will reduce. So minimal configuration. That means we don't write any configuration files in the Spring Boot. So it will reduce the configuration mechanism. Fifth point is we don't need to write the XML configuration. Only few annotations are required to do the configuration. Instead of we are writing the configuration, the Spring Boot will provide the some of the annotation. So only we can use those annotation. So because of that, we no need to require the configuration file. So 16th question, what they are asking is uh, Spring MEC flow. So it's a very important question. So now I'm going to explain uh, each and every point. So the client send the request for resource in the web application so whenever we are make a request so that means suppose for example we are considering the login example so when we are the customer is entering a username and password whenever he click the submit button so the spring point controller dispatch alert will receive that request and send the request to the handler mapping to identify the particular uh, controller for the given url so generally the, the dispatch alert is the heart of the spring so it is the front controller it will receive the request and it will uh, communicate with the handler mapping to identify the particular uh, handler for the given request so handler mapping identify the controller for the given request and send the dispatch alert so the handler mapping find the, uh, the particular handler for the given request and it will send to the dispatch alert. Dispatch alert will call the handler request method on the controller. Control is developed by the writing a simple Java class which implements the control interface or extending the adapter class. Dispatch alert will call the handler request method using request and response and it will call the user defined controller on the request and response. Control will call the business method according to the business requirement. Service class will call the DO class method for the business data. So controller will interact with the service layer. Service layer interact with the Dower class layer to uh, interact with the database to perform business operation. DO interact with the database to get the data uh, from the database and it will return the return back to the service layer. So DO gives the data will be processed according to the business requirement and return the result to the controller. So the service layer will return the same data to the controller. So controller return the model and view in the form of model view object back to the controller. So the front controller that is dispatch alert then try to resolve the hash value which is the by JSP or LH that we make by consulting the view resolver. So generally the view resolver will resolve the, the final uh, JSP phase and it will give to the controller. So the view resolver select the view is rendered back to the dispatch alert. So the dispatch alert consults the, uh, consult the particular view with the model. So it will return the uh, JSP with the model data. The view execute and return the HTML output to the dispatch alert. Dispatch alert will render the output to the browser. So you, the dispatch alert uh, like return the JSP page with the model data. The model data will be printed in the uh, JSP page. Finally, the JSP is printing uh, output to the customer. So friends, don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching this video.